keep you out of riffraff, mm -hmm. keep you in peace, because to me, peace is boy. Yes, I will fight you for peace. Yes. I ain't gonna even lie. I, my, my wife will tell you, I'll, 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 I'll be like, man, I, I'll, I'm, I'm intoxicated with peace. I love me some peace. You know, I don't get it too much when I'm pastoring, but yes. when I'm at home with my wife, I get a whole bunch of it. And she protects mine, and I protect hers. Yes. Peace makes them. I mean, you can have all the money in the world. You can have all this and that. But you ain't got peace with it? I want peace. I don't like all the agitated waters. Leave me by still waters. Come on now. I ain't got time for goats. Goats like the agitated waters. Goats, she, she don't go to uh, agitated waters. Goats love stuff. Starting up stuff. I'm, oh, I got a teaching I taught a long time ago, sheep, wolves, and goats. I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to help you out and find out which one you are. Okay, no, I just did. Look, now he was telling them, he was instructing them about the place of worship, right? In Exodus 20. But he told them, he said, there's certain things I want you to do. What that got to do with success? Because I'm here to tell you, if nobody ever told you, most of us are worshiping success. <laughs> look, look. I'm, thank you, Brother Mike. Mike know I'm telling the truth. Most of us, as worshipers, have said, if you, you, I got the, you know, this one over here said, okay. The other, this side over here, like, what? <laughs> That's a new one on me. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, it is the truth. Most of us. And, you know, it, you, it's, in this proper perspective, uh, success is good. It's, it's supposed to be, uh, uh, it develops a certain less level of, uh, 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 it brings a contentment. Mm -hmm. But it's not to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. right. And God is specific on how to attain it, just like he, yes. he is with this altar. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it says, actually in my head, I got that real deep Bible. <laughs> it says in verse 22, it said provision for approaching God. Am I right? And he told them and says, verse 22, let's go to 22. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, You have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. How I many know he didn't really talk to them from heaven? How I many know he talked to Moses from heaven? How I many know that heaven and where he talked to Moses, I know about the Mount Sinai. He went up twice. But how I many know that it was the tabernacle of the congregation? It was the meeting place. He told Moses, I'm going to meet with you over the cherubims. Mm -hmm. He communed with him out of the holy place, the most holy place. Well, actually, the holy place because Moses couldn't go into the most holy place. Mm -hmm. Another preach. Mm -hmm. Amen? So he said, so, but he communed with Moses to the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you, should not, you should not make with me gods of silver. Neither should you make unto you gods of gold. In other words, don't get caught up in the blessings. That's why when he seen them, when Peter and John seen uh, the man at the gate uh, beautiful, he said, silver and gold, have I not? Silver and gold speaks to things that is related to God. It's graven images, of course, historically, but it's, it's certain principles. Silver has to do with, with me and God. Gold has to do with God and me. That's why the tabernacle was always booted. I don't know if that's the word. It was covered, pitched. Right? With gold. Gold and wood. Right? So don't get so caught up on your anointing, your calling, your giftings, your position, your place, your title, your revelations, your brevity, your deepness in scriptures, your your, your ability to parlay truth, share it. Don't get caught up in it. It becomes a God. Because God shows up where your focus is. Wherever your focus is, is your God. What you're not willing to cut off to be with God is a God. It can be husband, wife, children, jobs. Where you spend most of your time is your God. I can sit down on that one. 
Because ultimately it's an issue of worship. Because the word means to ascribe worth. And whatever you put, wherever you put value on will draw your attention. That's why we don't have a dollar tree at our house. Now I know we don't. Uh, my, my closest thing to a dollar tree probably be ESPN. <laughs> Sports, to be honest. But, but, when Father calls, I will break up and get my tail. Like last night, I was I felt him tugging on me, and I'm like, man, this is a tight game. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we down by eight. Oh, you really want me to do that? All right, I go. I went downstairs for a little bit. I had to come back upstairs and ask my wife. Say, oh, look at the game. But those are disciplines yes. that you gotta have. He'll let you enjoy life. Yes. He's not gonna hold you back from life. He give us freely all things to enjoy. Yes. But he he'll he allow you to have them, but he won't allow them to have you. Because yes. yes. it's all if it has you. It is the issue of a worship mm -hmm. and idolatry. Mm -hmm. Idolatry. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? False worship. Yes. So the freedom of your will is important. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Being sensitive and flexible to whatever the Spirit of God is requiring is where you can find out where your idolatry is. Because that's where your attention is. Okay, let me move on. Y'all all right? Yes. yes. That's easy stuff, ain't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So most of y'all sitting there like, dang, really? It stuff coming across your mind. I said, dang. I'm going to have to do something with all that. Yes. It's like having a, inviting somebody over in your house already. It's like, okay. it's stuff strolling around, shoes all over the place. You're like, what the man? I got to clean up now? Yeah, you got to clean up. Yes. Put it in order. Yes. Why not? Okay. And an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon by the, what thy burnt offering, the peace offering, thy sheep, thy oxen, and all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. So wherever he what records his name, he'll come there. But he gave them a sacrificial system. He gave, he gave them something physically so they can make contact or experience an invisible God. He said, I will manifest myself in that place, in that location, in that position. Which is not places for us, it's mindset. Mm -hmm. If you have this mindset, I will meet you. Am I right? Yeah. But you're going to have to do it according to my system. Yeah. Yes. It's just like God. See, God, see, that's the whole thing. We don't have to figure out how to worship God. <laughs> It's in here. You don't have to figure out. Right, because he'll tell you what he wants from you. He's so specific. How you know? He's so specific that stars hang out at night. Am I right? He's so specific that the waters can't even overflow the, the banks. Unless sometimes there's a gravitational pull. Or some seismic a thing is going underneath the, the the sea's bottom or something. So there has to be some agitation, a shifting of the plates for it to shift. But normal in the normal occurrence of things, he set boundaries yeah. on the seasons. Yeah. Am I right, y'all? Yeah. Then all of a sudden we get saved, sanctified, filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. We don't know what God wants. I don't know what he wants. Do he want eight percent or ten percent? He wants ten. <laughs> do he want you to sit there and just look at worship, or do he want you to participate? He wants you to participate. Yes. Yeah, he wants you to lift up a hand. Yes. Sometimes he even it suggests dance. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. you know I'm yeah. bad, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's intellectualism. That's where the Syria comes in and starts telling you what you can't do. Now, if he prompts you, he already knows that it's, it's going to disturb you. Yeah. So he, he's trying to stretch you a little bit. 
You've been stuffy and stuck for a long period of time. It's time to move. He's trying to yeah. get you. And so any kind of way he's trying to get you to shift the move, he's gonna drop a word. He'll bust a move on you. Yeah. He'll drop a word in your belly to get you to see if he's gonna move. Yeah. And that goes for men. You know, when I was in the Royal Face Center, it was maybe about four of us that would get out and dance. I'd get out there. <laughs> Off the top of my head. Of course, I was younger, but still, I'll do it from time to time. <laughs> now, I think, <laughs> back then, I'd be looking for second round. I'd be, <laughs> but I, I didn't mind it because that's what he was leading me to do. And I understood measures. So whatever you will hold back from God, he can't do for you. And that's what he wants to do. So the enemy wants to do. He wants to keep you held back. Amen? So you see, he said, so he's given us the things that's necessary. That's 24. So he's given us the things that are necessary. I tell you that he's given us the things that are necessary. 25. If thou wilt make an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it with hewn stone. For it should not lift up thy tool upon it. Thou hast polluted it. Neither should thou go up by steps, uh-oh, unto my altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. So it, it just, that's just a broad stroke to tell you that you can't just do it your way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a modern version of telling you can't do it your way. Mm -hmm. You can't by your own strength. Can't do a huge stone. Yeah. Right? You can't sharpen it. Right. You can't have a tailor made worship. Yeah. You can't have a tailor made life. Amen. That's what the world the church. We got too many sparks going on. Everybody trying to make it uh, to accommodate them. No. He said, don't put any force on this. Let it be natural. Yes. Yes. Whatever it is. But then do it. There you go. 